evening, hello. We are ready to get started. It's so lovely to see so many familiar and excited faces with good reason. I'm Estella Chung, I'm Director of Collections and the curator that focuses on the life story of Marjorie Merriweather Post. And it's my pleasure to welcome all of you on behalf of our board and our director, Kate Markert, who is so very sorry she can't be with us this evening. And, and just a note about that in a moment. And I'd like to give a very special welcome to all of you who are joining us in simulcast this evening. So hello over there. Uh, before we continue, please open up your purses, your pockets, turn off anything that buzzes or wiggles or may distract you from tonight's very delicious talk. Now, as I had mentioned, Kate is so sorry to miss all of you because she's currently, I know you feel bad for her, she's currently with the Palm Beach Friends of Hillwood. <laughs> And uh, they are on their three-day cultural program exploring Marjorie Post's uh, favorite haunts and her significant role um, and continued legacy in beautiful Palm Beach. It's an annual February event, and I know so many of you are, are nearest and dearest and very devoted to Hillwood. So if you're looking for something to add to your Hillwood experience, please consider joining the Palm Beach Friends of Hillwood. To do so, you can contact our development office or you can look on to our website. And uh, tonight we are continuing our exploration of Great Homes and Gardens, also an annual event in February. And wow, aren't we lucky this is the most fabulous February evening. Um, and we're doing that today with uh, designer Alex Papa Christides. I know, I know, we're in for a treat tonight. Um, I've had the pleasure to get to know Alex through our new exhibition, The Artistic Table. We've had six extraordinary designers who took inspiration from Marjorie Post um, and from our collection to create a feast for the eye in the dacha. And I think uh, those of you who've already had a chance to go through the dacha, you've already gone home and rifled through your silverware drawers and you're trying to, trying to decide what you're going to do to uh, explore every little option that you have in your own cupboards. Um, if you haven't yet had the opportunity to explore the artistic table, including several lavish displays inside the mansion, I encourage you to return soon with friends and family. And maybe you can trade silver and dishes and things and, and plus up your tables. Now next month is Orchid Month, um, when the widest variety of orchids are in bloom. In addition to workshops on how to get your orchid to rebloom and other vital necessities, uh, please join Drew Asbury, our horticulturist, who is really such a delight and a wonderful teacher. Um, as he leads tours um, of our greenhouses, well, practically everything is overflowing with blooms. Um, please visit hillwood.org for more information. And members, of course, receive a discount on programs as well in the, as in the museum shop. So if you're not yet a member, please join us tonight. Okay, the moment we've been waiting for. It's my pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker. Alex Papa Christidis' work has been described as thoughtful, personal, sophisticated, and eclectic. He established his own firm in 1987, and today he is known for arresting elegant interiors that meld classical motifs with a modern perspective and sophisticated details. Alex's work has been featured in Architectural Digest, El Decor, House Beautiful, House and Garden, Southern Accents, In Style, The New York Times, and other publications. Alex has been included on the 2017 Architectural Digest 100 list, El Decor's A list of 25 interior designers, and New York Space's Top 50 Designers list. In 2012, Rizzoli published his book, The Age of Elegance, Interiors by Alex Papa Christides. And the publication is available in the museum shop. So after the lecture, you can just go on up the stairs and purchase your copy. And Alex will be right outside this door to sign your copy. And I can say there's really nothing more lovely as it's great to bring a bottle of wine as a hostess guest, but why not a personalized copy for your next dinner party of the book? So in short, I will not hold us up any longer. Please join me and welcome Alex Papa Christides.
Good evening, everybody, and thank you for being here. And I want to thank Hillwood for such a wonderful reception. And they have just been the most unbelievable people here. There, it's 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 really not only is it a great museum, but it's incredibly staffed with people who really care. And it's been a pleasure to do that table and to do anything I can ever for Hillwood. And we love Washington. Washington's divine. <laughs> so. Um, this is a very personal story. This is our family country house in Bridgehampton, which is very special to me because um, originally my mother had a house in Southampton that I grew up living in. My sister had a house in Bridgehampton on the ocean that she lost to a nor'easter. And my mother started to develop dementia and it was just, everything started to change in our lives. So my sister um, went shopping and found this house in Bridgehampton that was a spec house. And she called me and she sent me pictures and I said, you know what, we all need to move. It looks amazing. Let's do it. So we moved into this house and we lived in it for five years without doing anything. We literally didn't even paint the rooms. We brought furniture from other houses and sort of lived in a haphazard way getting to know the house. Well, since then we renovated it three times and um, we did it with a wonderful local architect because I believe that it's very important to support local businesses. So this is our house. Um, the gardens, as you can see, are very sculptured and manicured. The tree in the front, this white tree, is an incredible sculpture by the artist Ugo Rondononi. My sister was on a trip to Venice at the Biennale and found this incredible tree. So we actually designed our courtyard around it, and that's actually where you can park cars and for parties people pull in and get dropped off. The shutters on the house are brown, which I thought was sort of an interesting touch. You know, everybody does blue shutters or green shutters, and I liked that the shutters would be present but sort of quiet, so I painted them brown. This is our family that live in this house. Well, they did. It's actually changed. But this is one of our Christmas cards, and all those adorable dogs all lived together and barked and yapped and peed and did everything all over the house. Now the little girl on the bottom is my great niece, who's now five years old, and her mother's sitting next to her, her father's standing there with the poodle. The gentleman standing next to him is my brother-in-law, and sitting down in the white dress is my beautiful, glamorous sister. Um, my niece is next to her with my nephew and his poodle, and there's me and my Yorkie, Teddy, and my partner, Scott. So since then, Michael and Sabrina, the, the, with the black poodle in his hands, have had uh, an adorable little boy, Lucas, so he's missing from the picture. And actually, everybody has moved out of the house except for Samantha and David and Elle, the girl in the green dress, and the gray poodle, and the little girl, and Scott and I. The others have moved to their own houses that we have decorated since. So it was sort of bittersweet to have them move, but you know, we still kept this house. And as I say, this is my version of Tara. You know, I will die with this house. <laughs> Um, here's the front of the house with a beautiful antique car. We have tons of house guests and you know everybody loves these great old antique Mercedeses now so it's a picture I took myself and there's the front door to the house and these wonderful obelisks that I bought at a garden sale at the New York Botanical Gardens and you can see how structured the hedges are. So this is a view of our entrance hall looking down with a wonderful stenciled floor and an octagonal skirted table, which is a trick that I love. I learned it from the Chateau Grousset from Charles de Bastigui's house. And if you're not familiar with Charles de Bastigui, he is really an amazing collector. He died, I think, in the early 70s, and Emilio Terry was his decorator. And there's an auction catalog of Sotheby's of the house and the furniture, and it's really incredible. So Google him and look him up, Charles de Bastigui and Emilio Terry. Um, this octagonal table was also used in the Villa Malcontente. So, you know, I'm always pulling from history and interested in the history of decorative arts, and that's a great deal what inspires me. Uh, again, to sort of tone down the hall, there's this big hat rack filled with straw hats, so if anybody comes for lunch, they can pull off a hat if they don't want to sit, get too much sun. And on the center of the table is a satyr that was in my mother's living room. Here is a close-up of an Italian mirror, and there's a pair of these in consoles in the entrance hall. Uh, the consoles uh, are Regency, you can't really see them in this picture, but the, the, the flower is by Vladimir. So Vladimir is this wonderful Russian artist who I actually used on my table here at Hillwood, and he created those amazing lilacs. I collect his things. I fir 
actually the first time I met him was through a great friend Howard Slatkin who was an amazing decorator and it was really the man who discovered Vladimir and and I just think he's so talented and he sold in a few very exclusive shop. Suzanne Reinstein sells his things, but his things are incredible. He's, I, I believe he's doing an exhibit here at Hillwood next month, but he's an incredible, incredible talent. He made this tree. So I always like to have my own containers. I give him the pots, antique pots, and have him build the flower around this. And this is camellias. So this is our living room. So again, it's, it's, it's a wonderful collection and a mix of things. The sofas came from my sister and brother-in-law's Park Avenue apartment just the way they are. They've been in that fabric for 20 years and that, they look just like that now. So I believe in quality. They're custom-made sofas and they're still in the same fabric. And believe me, this room gets used, used, used. Dogs, children, all over the furniture. And we really had no problems. The only problem was with the rug. So now you'll see there's no rug. <laughs> I'll tell you that story. Um, so again, the house is filled with modern art. There's a wonderful console in the back of the room. I love to have a games table in the living room, and that gets used. We play this wonderful Greek card game in my family called Bariba, and we just have these incredible competitions and the most fun playing cards in our living room. And I believe that a living room is meant to be lived in. Use your living room. So if you put things in it, I'm, I'm a little anti-TV in the living room, but everything else is fine. I just feel like one room shouldn't have a TV. Um, but so, you know, there's always cut flowers and plants, and I go to the garden shop whenever I'm out there and pick plants, and we use a wonderful local florist who does magical things for us. Oh, sorry, just one more thing. So the curtain rods I actually reused from my sister's living room, too. They're gilt bronze from P.E. Garin, and they were, I just cut them down a little bit, and they were so fabulous, I wanted to reuse them, and I reused them in the living room and changed the curtains, but I, I reused the poles. So here is, again, the Regency desk with a Regency chair with a chintz that I used on the reverse, which I love to do sometimes to sort of give it an old feeling. And there's the sisal rug on the floor. Well, that sisal rug, which I loved, turned into the biggest wee-wee pad you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I mean, dogs feel about sisal, I think, the way cats feel about catnip. But I mean, they just destroyed it. And finally, I said, you know, you just can't clean sisal. So we're, we're in the process of making a wool rug for the room so that it can be cleaned. And hopefully, the dogs will use the garden. Um, this console, which anchors the center of the living room, is a really great story. So it was in my sister's entrance foyer in her Park Avenue apartment 20 years ago. And we had looked for a console everywhere, and I was very picky about what I wanted. And I found this console at Christie's, and I went to the auction with my sister, and we ended up overpaying for the console. So I was really upset. And you know, but she said, "Look, you know what? We've been looking for it for years. We have it. It's done. Let's get the thing home. Let's get it in the entrance hall." We get the console. They're delivering it at the back door. The trucker loses his footing and drops the top. The top of the table was 18th century. It was an incredible inlaid top. The whole value of the table was in the console, in the top. So anyway, luckily the truckers had insurance. We got our money back. And a couple of months later, I was just like, I'm, what am I going to do? I'm devastated. The truckers called and said, you know, Alex, we have this base we have nothing to do with. Do you want it? I said, oh my God, of course, I'll take it. So at the time, I had a wonderful marble man. I spent $1,500 on that top, and that console ended up costing me $1,500. <laughs> but we've taken it everywhere with us, and I couldn't love it more. So you know what? Even in a bad story, something good comes. I always say every cloud has a silver lining, and that's a bad decorating story that actually turned good. Um, there's just green leaves in the in this wonderful elephant that I move around. And in front of the console are a tiny pair of Lalonde bamboo chairs. And if you're not familiar with Claude and Xavier Lalonde, they're a pair of artists, a husband and wife team, that created this wonderful surrealistic furniture with animals and nature, which are elements that are very important to me. And I love bringing sort of organic things in the house. You'll see there's a pair of Japanese wicker baskets under that gilt wood console. I'm not moving. <laughs> Hold it. No, no movement. Sorry. 
Okay, so this is another view of our living room and another seating area. One of my signature things is silk velvet tiger and leopard. So there was a great decorator by the name of Georges Geoffroy, really one of my style icons, a great French decorator, and there's actually a book out on him now. And it was something that he did. He used a little bit of tiger, leopard in a room, and I think it's so divinely chic. I actually think of tiger and leopard as a neutral. Um, I love the concept of animal prints. And again, the room is quite formal with the gilt chairs. But then there's a photograph that I bought at an art show in the Hamptons of Venice with a big splash of water to sort of add something contemporary to the room so that it doesn't take itself too seriously. The turtle is one of a pair that I bought years ago from a great dealer by the name of Amy Perlin. And they're these wonderful carved gilt turtles with horse hair on their backs, these divine little footstools. I own one and I have one in the country too. Sorry, Diane, it's not working. Nope, gone. Okay. All right, so this is a, a, another corner of the living room with one of those little slipper sofas in it and a pair of chairs. The chair in the foreground with the sort of little brown fabric with its back to you, I just bought six months ago from an incredible auction in Paris. And I was obsessed with these chairs because they belonged to, again, another one of my style e icons, uh, Arturo's Lopez Wilshire, who was a great collector of French furniture and had this incredible house in Neuilly, in, in, outside of Paris. And it's really, really special. It has shells carved into the back, and that's why I loved it for the beach. I also love the idea of having pull-up furniture in a room so that, you know, we're sometimes 18, 24, 36. You know, you gotta move the furniture around and have that capability, things that are comfortable and you can actually use. And there's that elephant vase filled with flowers next to a Lalonde candlestick and uh, an 18th century Portuguese writing box. So this is our TV room. Now this is where we watch TV. Serious TV watching goes on in here. <laughs> this is the real deal. The inspiration for this room was, I don't know if you remember I Dream of Jeannie and that bottle she lived in, but I, as a child, I just thought that was the most magical thing to have a sofa that wrapped around the whole room. So I created this sofa and, you know, why not, if you're going to do it, do it right, upholstered it in Fortuny. So <laughs> I've used the Fortuny on the sofa and then on the border, there, there was, uh, Fortuny often has these borders, I used it on the um, face of the cushion to sort of create interest. Um, the ottomans I made, the coffee table ottomans, and there's a pair of gueridons in the room. The walls are upholstered in velvet. And actually, in front of these stools, facing the big TV, is a pair of club chairs and ottomans where we sit all the time. Uh, the white lamps are Christopher Spitzmiller. He's my dear friend, and I use his lamps like chocolates. I love him. I think he's so talented, and I think his lamps go in every interior. Uh, this is our sunroom. And so in between our living room and our dining room is, was this room in the house. And I just found it charming. You go out the doors, that's the front door, and you go through to the pool area and to our covered porch. So my sister had these day beds in her beach house and they were natural straw. So to bring them to this house, which was much more formal, I stained the wicker and reupholstered them in this wonderful Clarence House fabric. The walls I did in a wonderful count and tout paper, and the grisailles in the 18th century frames were my mother's from her living room in Southampton. The snail, again, I just love these crazy little tables and animal things, so I found him at an antique show and bought him. Here's a picture that I took of the room, and that palm tree that I put in a pedestal in the living room all summer sits outside, as you'll see it outside later. But in the winter, instead of sending it to the greenhouse, I kept it in our living room on a pedestal. There's a pair of these chalky white chairs in the room covered in the flame stitch. And I just love the carving on these chairs. And as all my clients know, if they have something that I like the shape of, but I don't like the finish on it, I chalky white it. So in my office, they say, if you stand in one place too long, he might chalky white you. <laughs> so these are a pair of chalky whited chairs. And there's a wonderful pair of Venetian lanterns and divine curtains, two pairs of curtains in the room that were inspired from a wonderful old Colfax and Fowler design. This is our dining room. So our dining room, this is my sister's original dining room chairs and table from her New York apartment. And I reupholstered the chairs in a brown wool and had Holland and Sherry make this incredible applique for the chairs. Uh, 
the carpet my sister and I found in Stark, and it's a little bit too big for the room, but we felt like the whole house is sort of a built collection of all of our things, and you'd often see in great country houses where the rug was just a little bit too big or a little bit too small. I always think bigger is better than smaller, but the rug was a little bit too big, so we said, you know what, we're not gonna cut it down, we're gonna keep it the way it is. Um, and we put it in the dining room, and it actually is great for hiding stains, and it's really wonderful. The walls are papered in this wonderful faux bois wallpaper that I love, and I put the Portuguese tiles inset into the mantle because we collect blue and white dishes. And I wanted there to be a conversation, because there's really so little color in the house, I wanted there to be a conversation between the dishes and what was inside the mantle. So now I'm going to start with a few of my different table settings. Um, like Marjorie, I was I'm obsessed with dishes. <laughs> but I can't just buy 10. I need to have 50 or 60. So I really am a crazy person with the dishes because I believe that when you entertain, you shouldn't have to rent anything. So I have quite the stash of dishes. I've turned every coat closet into a dish closet. We have no more coats in the house. In the winter, you have to take your coat with you to bed because there's no coat closets. They're all dish closets and napkin closets and linen closets. So here is a table set. Again, I use a wonderful local florist, Sag Harbor florist, William Yeoward glasses, uh, wonderful custom-made placemats, pa uh, flatware I buy in Paris, antique dishes and napkins that I have custom-made for me. Here is the table set for one of the Christmas holidays. And here is, I, I, I started collecting this wonderful aptware made in France. And, you know, it's really, a dying thing. You're not going to be able to get it for that much longer. It's really, really special. And it comes in these beautiful shapes. I buy it from this wonderful dealer um, in Paris. And he makes it for me. And it's really, really special. And there's just, again, I'm obsessed with blue and white. And it's another kind of blue and white. Um, the flowers change all the time. I always tell the florist, find whatever's the prettiest and, and just fill the vases with something beautiful. In the bookcase, again, a collection of more blue and white, a wonderful Japanese wood rabbit, my love for animals, and on the upper shelf is a divine mother of pearl diorama that I bought from the Kenshire auction. Um, here you see the chandelier is hung with garlands of um, pine. Here's a close-up of another table setting, again blue and white, but a totally, a much less formal pattern, something I bought from Irvine and Morrison, the Penny Morrison and Carolina Irving had a store together in London and I ordered the dishes from them, hand-painted, and they're wonderful. And I often take the table settings and take accessories from the bookcases and put them onto the table. As you can see, the, the little Delft bust and shells, and I have a big collection of shells that I often add to my table settings. Here is, um, so I took, I, we did a benefit at home. It wasn't a benefit, but we, we did a, well, we did a, a show house for ARF, which is a very important charity to me. It's the Animal Rescue Fund of the Hamptons. And it's a no-kill shelter that really saves these amazing animals. And as you can see in the picture, we're such animal people. And then just my heart goes out because I think the way my dog lives, and then there are so many poor angels who just don't live the way, well, they're people who don't live the way my dog lives, really, but I mean, it's the animals that, that just break my heart, these helpless, beautiful little angels. So, so um, we did a dinner for ARF at home, and I took out all the sunroom furniture, I take out all the dining room furniture, and I take out the entrance hall skirted table, and we can seat 60 people in the house, and then drinks and cocktails are outside, or if the weather isn't good, we do drinks in the living room and the TV room. And this is my dear friend, who's the chairwoman of the board of ARF, Lisa McCarthy and I, sort of going over the seating. And we, we were friends first, and then Lisa asked me onto the board. And I just, it's so worthwhile and such a wonderful thing that I'm doing, helping those animals. And it's a, it's a great place. ARF is amazing. But um, we then decided we had such a good time working together on ARF, we would start a business of our own. So we started a tabletop business called Everyday Elegance. So, you know, I have this wonderful lady in New Jersey who does great place cards for me. She keeps my place cards. I call her with the list of the names and she FedExes the cards to us the next day, changing the color. She has them in gold and in silver and um, we figure out which pattern we want. She sends us the place cards 
beautifully calligraphy. You know, I love all the details. I think that makes your guests feel special, that there's an attention to detail and you put the time into making the effort. Sort of those wonderful old school traditions that you just don't see anymore. Um, the candlesticks I bought at Christie's in Paris and the cash pose, it's very hard to find a lot of cash pose. So I had them made for me by de Gournay in blue and white. And they, they just have this beautiful program where they make these beautiful cash pose and they can do them in any color you want. The Hurricanes, again, if you go to Paris, my favorite home store in the world, oddly enough, is Christian Dior. So there's this wonderful lady, Doris Brenner, who was Yule Brenner's widow, who started the store. And it is in Christian Dior. And it's just divinely chic. So those hurricanes I order from Dior in Paris. You know, I am a little bit of a shopaholic, so everywhere I go I shop. But these are from Paris. So here's an example of our dining room table out. And we own all our own ballroom chairs and all these skeleton tables that I then have like four different versions of skirted tables. My trick to it is, so I use these tablecloths to the floor and then I use a short white tablecloth. But underneath the white tablecloth, I put a plastic topper so that if red wine or something should spill, it doesn't affect the cloth underneath. The chandelier has a hook on it so that it can be pulled up so it's normally much lower over the table, but I have a little gold S hook that catches the chandelier so nobody hits their head. And we can seat 30 people in our dining room under this with, with uh, the uh, skeleton tables and ballroom chairs. So here's two versions of place settings. Again, you know, I've used fruit on the table and nuts, and then I've taken these wonderful Christopher Spitzmiller gourds that normally sit on the mantle and brought them onto the table. So my sister always says to me, you know, what can I buy my husband? You know. Husbands don't really like things that much. They just don't care. They're not that interested. I mean, it depends on what kind of husband, but in general, most husbands are just, you know, they're like guys and they're not that interested in stuff. But, you know, she always wants to buy him something and he loves beer. So I said, you know what? I have a wonderful idea. Silver has a great value right now. Let's start collecting 18th century beer tankards. <laughs> so she said, Al, oh, what a brilliant idea. So on the table is one of them. And so we built him this incredible collection. I think if he opens one more tankard, he's going to be like, are you people kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so here is um, a holiday table, a Christmas table of ours. And again, it's still blue and white, but uh, I've used the pine cones, natural pine cones that have been spray painted gold as place card holders. And uh, I have the wonderful collection of nutcrackers. So one year for Christmas, my partner and I went to Germany in the fall, and we found this wonderful man that makes the original nutcrackers. So we ordered like every single version of them, and I gave them to my sister for Christmas, and she loved them. So we use them on our Christmas tables. So this is our kitchen, which is the heart of the house. You know, it's just everything happens in the kitchen. The big fights, the big cooks, the big everything, it all happens in the kitchen. We hang out. This is where we have midnight snack and our gossip fest. And Anyway, so a kitchen's very important. The way it's laid out, the way it works. I think you have to have an island. I think that's very important. I think you have to have a very practical floor that you can clean things that's not too hard on your back. So this is where it all happens. There's our breakfast room. So we built a little breakfast room off the kitchen. This is in one of the renovations. And the chairs were actually mine from my first apartment. Uh, I had bought them at William Doyle. They had belonged to Barbara Streisand. They were her breakfast room chairs. And I stripped them. They were painted green. And I painted them white and did them in this wonderful Colfax, Fowler, Colfax and Fowler fabric, again, that I laminated. I think in a kitchen, you really want laminated chairs with children in the house and ketchup and mayonnaise. You know, there needs to always be a practical side to living. And laminating your kitchen chairs is just the best thing you can imagine. Um, there's Teddy sitting in his dog bed. The overscaled lantern we bought at Christie's in an auction. And the table I had made by uh, one of my New York architects with leaves. Because again, sometimes I think it's hard to find the right size table. So I custom made that, as you can see, chalky white again, my favorite. Um, here is Lisa helping to set the table for everyday elegance in our breakfast room and two different settings. You see the way I mix all different sets. This is um, the way my breakfast looks in the morning and I'm 
sifting through auction catalog and I really believe that you use all your good things you know everything in our house is beautiful use your silver w what are we waiting for you know for what your kids aren't going to want it and you have to convince them to want it and use it in a fresh way you have to enjoy your things use your things and really have fun with them and be creative and mix it up um, as you see here we've mixed it up a little bit you know I found these wonderful modern sort of splat placemats um, at the gift show that we sell on Everyday Elegance and I've mixed it with Tori Birch's white version of uh, the Doty Thayer China. I've always loved that Doty Thayer but I've just never wanted that apple green so she did it in white and I thought it was so much fun. Um, just different settings and different flowers. Now this is our one of our guest bedrooms. This is people clamor for this room. Our guests are like who's in that room? I want the four poster bedroom. <laughs> Again, a guest bedroom is so important. It's so important that there's fresh flowers and there's perfect sheets and there's a wonderful robe on the back of the door and you need to have toothpaste and shave cream and a toothbrush and perfume and anything a lady or a gentleman could forget the medicine cabinets are filled with. And again, it's sort of a very cozy, inviting room. Of course, there is a TV in the room. Um, and a wonderful collection of books, chest of drawers, a nice closet and en suite bathroom. This is um, our bedroom and I like a very special kind of bed so I always have an upholstered bed and I think with little dogs it's important that you have something they can get up and down on the furniture on. <laughs> the last thing you want is a little dog with his back thrown out. So <laughs> these I found downtown in an antique dealer and they actually belonged to the decorator Billy Baldwin so of course that was very close to my heart. I love things with a little bit of a provenance and history. Um, so Teddy uses those to get up and down on the bed. Uh, the commode is 18th century and the fabric on the curtains is a wonderful benison fabric that um, I called Songbird that they colored. It was in an original color and they recolored, they did it for me, they brought it back which I was so happy and now it's in their line. I think it's so pretty. Here's a close-up of uh, the commode and fresh flowers always in the bedrooms whenever we are in the country with a wonderful pair of turquoise birds, an 18th century uh, drawing that was from my apartment in New York that I had no more room for and the lampshades which you can see with the trim. I was inspired because one night I was up late watching an old movie, The Prince and the Showgirl, I don't know if you remember it, with Laurence Olivier and Marilyn Monroe and there were these crazy lampshades with this kind of trim on it. So I snapped a picture and said I'm going to make those lampshades and I did. Uh, my sister and brother-in-law's bedroom which is sort of a wonderful all aqua feeling. The bookcases belong to my mother. They were in her Southampton living room but they were coral where you see the blue painted and I repainted them in uh, the aqua to match the bedroom. A big sleigh bed in silk velvet, aqua walls, contemporary art over the bed. And this was my wonderful mother's bedroom in the country. We actually renovated the house the first time for her so that she could have a bedroom downstairs because she couldn't go upstairs anymore. Um, since then this is, this is the new version but she would love it. This is the redecorated version of it. But it still has her bedside tables. It still has her gilt wood settee from her living room and her putti lamps from her living room that we kept. The, the wonderful Coromandel um, pictures set in gilt wood frames I found in Stanford in one of those antique malls just on a pile and I thought how divine. So I bought those. The fabrics are all Clarence House in the room and the wallpapers count in town. Here's my divine mother. So here I'm 16 years old with my amazing mother who really was the inspiration of my life. She took me all over the world. She was a true anti Mame figure. We went to Greece for the summer. We stayed two years. <laughs> we had a house on the islands. It opened up onto the beach. I had a donkey, three dogs, and a rabbit. <laughs> I would drive my donkey through the house with the rabbit on my lap and the dogs chasing behind. It really was insane and I had the most amazing childhood. I'm really blessed to have a wonderful family. So the Hamptons is also all about entertaining outside and that's a very important element. If my brother-in-law had it his way we would be in down coats eating dinner outside every night in the country. Um, so we, we, we love to be outside and again you know I wanted to sort of create something very cozy and inviting. I use this wonderful wicker furniture 
by Bilecki Brothers, and I upholstered it in all, again, blue and white, custom-made quadrille fabrics and great China Sea fabrics. There's the palm tree that was originally in our living room that I bring in in the winter, and it's out there in the summer. Um, Close-ups of it. And these wonderful little tables I found at just like a garden show in the Hamptons, again, they were painted white and I had them painted navy blue and the frogs on top are these wonderful covered frog dishes in blue and white porcelain that I found at Christie's, just fell in love with them. So here are uh, the sun chairs uh, in a metal bamboo with a, a China Seas fabric made for the outdoors and blue and white umbrellas that I custom made. The fence, because of the babies, we needed to have a pool fence around. And so I said, well, if we're going to have a pool fence, it better be chic. So I made this Chinese Chippendale pool fence. Um, a view of our garden. Um, so, you know, it's very park-like, and we keep it rather park-like, with limited types of trees and very sculpted, and garden sculpture. Our flowers are only white hydrangeas, and around the memory garden we have some white roses, and the, pool, the, the, the indoor pool house and yoga room we have some white roses. But other than that, it's just the white hydrangeas. But the beautiful thing about the white hydrangeas is when they start to die, they turn this beautiful green. So they're really, really beautiful. I think you'll see them in another picture. So this is our pool house, and again, it was a structure that was already there, but we renovated. We made it into a little living room, and uh, it has a powder room and a little kitchenette. We often eat down here, and it's very important to have the awnings. You can see there the hydrangeas are, and they've started to turn green. Here's the interior of our pool house, which is upholstered in an outdoor velvet, and these are a pair of... Uh, antique Victorian chairs that I've copied. I call them the stock chairs. There's this kind of small club chair that's super comfortable and really hugs you well. The stone floor, the bead bordering on the wall, the collection of Delft and Chinese porcelain. And here's a view from the pool house back to the main house. And you see the terraces and the blue and white awning and these wonderful sort of little rickshaws that I found. And you can lie down and take a nap in them and stay in the shade. Um, I have these beautiful lemon trees that I also bring out in the summer in blue pots. Here's again the Irvine and Morrison porcelain and flowers, dahlias that I did from, um, I did myself. I went to the farm stand and did the dahlias. I love to do my own flower arranging whenever I can. Um, this is my partner Scott picking lemons from the lemon tree in our garden. I had these huge Versailles tubs that I thought I was going to put in the front of the house. And sometimes the tricky thing about ordering things that you don't see, <laughs> the tubs were a little big for the front of the house. So I said, OK, I'll put them on either side of the vegetable garden, and I'll put lemon trees in them. So that's what we did. And here he is picking lemons. Um, so again, you know, I think we're so fortunate and so blessed and so lucky. And we live such a beautiful life that it's very important to give back. So we try to open our house to charity. And this was an event that we did for God's Love We Deliver. Architectural Digest asked me to do this. And I said, of course. So we had 400 people in our garden. I mean, how was I? <laughs> I nearly had a heart attack, but I said, I'm doing it. It's the right thing. So I did it. And whenever I do a party, I call on my dear friend, the talented David Mon, who really is a genius. He's an incredible party planner. He has an incredible book out, and he's super, super talented. So we work together. Again, you can see he understands my aesthetic of blue and white, and we put huge blue and white jars on green pedestals, and all the tables are white with blue trim, and then we brought all the furniture from all the upstairs porches and terraces that you can't see into the garden and created these wonderful living rooms everywhere. So this is a sculptor by the name of Igor Mitterai, who is a dear friend, was a dear friend of my divine Italian sister-in-law. And she took us on a pilgrimage, a family pilgrimage to Tuscany, where we went to his studio and chose this incredible sculpture. Anyway, if you're not familiar with him, you should look him up, Igor Mitterai. So he does these incredible bronze sculptures that are sort of classical, but again, with a modern edge. This sculpture is 14 feet tall to give you a sensibility. But you see the simplicity and the sort of the structure that I keep the hedges. To the right is the tennis court, which you can't even see hidden, but we 
are always playing tennis there. Every weekend, we have a tennis coach come and play with us and make us play. So we play every Saturday and Sunday, and our friends come over, and we play tennis rounds. We do run the house like it's a hotel. It really is like a hotel. Um, so this is another side of the garden, which you really, it's changed a little bit from the picture because now my sister gave her granddaughter a miniature playhouse that we created. So the architect and I designed this amazing little garden folly, which I don't have a picture of, but um, it's a tiny little white Georgian house with finials and shutters. And I decorated the whole interiors with miniature furniture, all in sort of Colfax and Fowler fabrics. It's adorable. <laughs> Um, so this apple, again, is by that, the, the people that I love, the Lalans, Claude and Xavier Lalonde. And I went to an exhibit at, the, um, at a wonderful gallery downtown called Paul Kasman that represents Lalonde, and I saw this apple. Well, my sister's husband's father was um, really a great man in New York, a man by the name of Lou Rudin, and he was somebody who when New York was in a great deal of trouble, he got behind the city with a whole group of real estate and businessmen. Felix Roatan was one of them. And they saved New York out of bankruptcy by paying their taxes in advance. And what they did around this was they created a campaign for I Love New York and sort of bringing New York back. And one of the things was this symbol they called New York the Big Apple. So my sister and brother-in-law collect anything with apples. So again, I called my sister. I said, honey, do I, did I see a gift for your husband? This amazing. She said, oh my god, you're a genius. So we bought this huge nine-foot apple. And it's set in our garden amongst these trees that we planted. And it's amazing because it's kind of almost like something out of the Jolly Green Giant. This big apple fell from these trees. Again, sort of surreal, and it's this beautiful, beautiful sculpture. So again, two sides of the pool with the fence, the table set for 4th of July, um, all blue and white. There's pictures, these are pictures that I took myself. Um, I'm obsessed with Instagram and I love taking pictures. Uh, two of my different table settings. So I use those tables outside as well, as you can see. Um, in the garden on a summer night, I use those tables, the skeleton tables with the ballroom chairs. And there's a different shaped aptware plate. There are some wonderful plates made by, again, by my great friend Christopher Smith Miller, set up by the pool house. And this is my dear friend David Mon. So David Mon and, you know, my, my partner in business, in Everyday Elegance, Lisa McCarthy. So Lisa McCarthy's on the board of ARF. She invites me to an ARF dinner before I had joined the board. So I get to the dinner and it's a white tent. It's sort of gravel on the floor, um, sort of heavy burlap tablecloths and dog biscuits in the center of the table. So I didn't say a word. I said, what a wonderful cause. You know, I love ARF. It's a great charity. But you know, this is the Hamptons, and people don't want to go out on a Saturday night to a charity unless it's magical. So I called Lisa, and I said, Lisa, we can't make people go out on a Saturday night unless it's divine. So I called my friend David Mon, who's another big animal lover, and we all got together, and we make these magical parties. And we decorate the tent and do these wonderful tables and these fun tablecloths. And there's David this year's, at this year's event right before it starts, holding my dog Teddy, who goes everywhere. He's here tonight. He goes everywhere because he's got an opinion on everything. So he likes to go and see it all. And he loves Washington, by the way, and Hillwood. He was very impressed that the museums in Washington let him in. He was thrilled. Um, so here is another David Mon event. He did the God's Love We Deliver party, and he also did this birthday party for my great niece in our garden, where he did it all in pink and white, with white umbrellas, and he used Chinese lanterns thrown around the garden. So here's the house decorated for the holidays. Um, and again, I use this wonderful local florist, Sag Harbor florist. But on a trip to Houston, I saw these incredible trees. It was right before Christmas, and Houston, in this area in Houston called River Oaks, they definitely know how to do Christmas. Oh my God, do they do Christmas. You drive by one house, one house is better than the next with lights and trees and Santas and globes and ornaments. But, but really, many of it, a lot of it was beautifully done. And I saw these incredibly lit trees. So I took pictures of them and I came home and I said to our gardener, I think we can do this. So we have these four huge trees on all the sides of the driveway right there, and the, the, the Ugo Rondononi's in the center. So he wraps the trees in these lights. It takes him literally a month 
with a cherry picker and a team to wrap these trees in lights. But it's become, it doesn't hurt the tree, believe me, I wouldn't do it if it did. But it's become this wonderful landmark of the Hamptons that people drive by and they get out and they take pictures. And it's really, really adorable. It's like a crazy Christmas story. So here's our hallway decorated for Christmas with natural garlands and wreaths and gold ribbon. Our mantle, our Christmas tree, there's Teddy again with his opinion on Christmas. <laughs> In our sisal free living room because we can't have sisal. Um, this is a table that I did for the Lenox Hill Neighborhood Association and I'm in collaboration with Gracie. I'm the first designer to work with Gracie. I'm going to design some papers and some fabrics for them. Uh, Gracie's a wonderful company that makes really beautiful wallpapers and uh, they were one of the original dealers who dealt in wallpapers for you know all the great decorators Elsa DeWolf and Siri Mon. Um, so they made this beautiful tablecloth for me in red, white, and blue. And um, Lisa and I did it for Everyday Elegance uh, for the Lenox Hill Neighborhood Society. Uh, here is one of our table settings from Everyday Elegance, sort of something young and fresh and very current. We custom made the napkins um, and put it all together with beautiful flowers from my favorite florist in New York, Zeze. And here is a table setting that I did for Christie's. They were doing an auction, and my great friend Stacy Bucus, who does this wonderful um, quintessence, she asked me to help her. So we went to the auction and chose all the things to put the tables together. And then I threw in these fun ecat napkins and had Zeze do the flowers to sort of give it a kind of fresh take on an antique setting. Um, so this is, again, a very special room for me. This was my Kipps Bay room that I did in 2016 for the Kipps Bay Show House, which is an amazing charity. I've done four rooms for Kipps Bay, and it's really the, other than the Southampton Show House that I've done once, it's really the only show house that, that I do. Um, and it was this enormous room, and I looked at it, and I said, you know, I'm such a color person, but I don't think so. My two biggest projects for two clients had been they wanted silver, white, gold, and gray. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to sort of step away from myself, and I'm going to do something different, and I'm going to use no color. So I did this room, and it was a dining room, but I felt like just a dining room that's so enormous seems wasteful. That's my practical side. And I said, you know, it should have a seating area, and it should be a room that you have dinner, you get up, you sit in, you hang out, you use the room. So I did a seating area, and the carpet is a Turkish, seamed together Turkish tent panels from Beauvais, which I love that kind of rustic juxtaposition. The floor is hand painted by my stenciler, and the walls are gracie. The chandeliers are from Jerry Bland, they're 18th century Georgian chandeliers that we had the artist Eve Kaplan make contemporary beads for and string into the chandelier. The chairs are 18th century and the curtains are, are meant to feel like a Balenciaga ball gown because my inspiration for the room was Mona von Bismarck who again was one of the great style icons of the 20th century. If you don't know Mona von Bismarck, Google her. She was like the biggest Balenciaga customer and she had these incredible houses, incredible taste, and she was amazing. So this is the seating area in the room. I've got, uh, you know, an ancient Roman head, a Lalonde candlesticks, these poofs that I make that are really great because you can pull them around and sit on them. Two people can sit on them at a party. Uh, a wonderful gold Christopher Spitzmiller gourd, Tony Victoria tables, inset with Nancy Loren panels, and a big comfortable sofa. And there's my signature, little bit of leopard. <laughs> um, here's the dining room table, which again, the artist Eve Kaplan and Jerry Bland made for me. And there, the table base is made out of ceramic, but it's gold and silver and pewter boulders. So again, I love that kind of rusticness set against these very fine 18th century chairs. The consoles actually belong to Mona von Bismarck. They were in her Paris apartment, and that was sort of the start off, because I love the 18th century, but I just love it used in a new way. I like to keep things fresh, and I think that antiques give a room gravita. This alligator stool, which is in bronze, is again by the Lalans, and so is that tiny little alligator chair. The lamps are the Alex lamps for Christopher Spitzmiller, and the wallpaper, again, was designed the original, I did a talk for Gracie, talking about Gracie through the ages, the original paper was made 
for Elsa DeWolf. It was an antique paper that she used in Condon Nast Ballroom, but it was a much smaller scale. So I took the scale and blew it up. Can you see in the corner there are some purple flowers to the, to the right of the screen? To the left of the screen, sorry, there are purple flowers. Well, at the last minute as I was signing off on the PO, my partner said to me, Al, you can't have no collar. So I said, okay. So I added just a little bit of purple into the room. <laughs> Here's a close-up of the table with silver and gold dishes, Bucciolati flatware, and beautiful linens made for me by Jane Scott Hodges of Leontine Linens, who's a great friend of mine. And she also made the napkins for me here at Hillwood. The table is glass topped, but we put a brass rim on it to give it sort of a chunkiness. And um, the garniture is Baldini, Italian 19th century porcelain. Flowers are Zeze. The clock is 18th century from the Chinese Porcelain Company. And the painting next to it is by the contemporary artist George Kondo. The obelisk is Serge Roche. Sorry, no, it's, yeah, it is Serge Roche. No, it's Samuel Marx. Sorry. The obelisk is Samuel Marx from Liz O'Brien, another great friend and a great dealer in New York. And here's me and my partner in our new business, Everyday Elegance, which is our table setting business. And here is my Hillwood table. So we go sort of full circle, back to the leopard and the Vladimir flowers and the table, you know, the, the, the place cards and sort of everything that I love, I always try to incorporate. The screen was hand painted by Gracie for me and the chair fabric on the chairs was also hand painted for me by Gracie. The chairs were my mother's dining room chairs from her Southampton house and the carpet, the silk carpet is from Beauvais. But I love I have a very strong kinship with Marjorie, even though I never knew her. I feel very close to her because of we had so much, so many things that we both loved. We love hospitality and entertaining. We loved having guests. We love having parties. We love our dishes. We love our dogs. So for me to be at Hillwood, it just feels very special. And and I'm sure if I knew her, I would have been obsessed with her. You know, she, she just seems like such a great lady, and it's really a great place. Hillwood is an amazing museum. So you're lucky to have it in your town. Enjoy it, and I'll keep coming back to see Hillwood. And thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I tried to squeeze it all in. How long did I talk? Was I long? Was I too long? <laughs> I tried to get as much in. I'm sure I forgot things. Thank you so nice to see you. Great presentation. Oh, Everything's so beautiful. Oh, you know, I love it all so much. I know. I know.